Hello and welcome to our lecture on categorization. So we finally finished memory and we're on to the question of how do you decide what groups items belong in? Those of you who have attended CSUN in person know that we have a lot of recycling bins on campus. I'm the one standing in front of the bins trying to figure out what category uh, a foam cup or a, a lined cup belongs in. It's sort of paper, but is it compostable paper or not? I really struggle with categories. But categorization is something that we do all the time. It seems obvious and automatic. And in this um, segment of our first lecture on categorization, I'm going to try to convince you that there's more than meets the eye to categorization. So in the old days, when um, Facebook originally started, there were two categories of gender, either you were male or female. Now, Facebook has 71 categories of gender. So, you know, that's indication right there that something's complicated. Let me give you another example. This comes from the DSM, Diagnostic and Statistical Manual, that is used to diagnose um, every mental illness that exists. Uh, in 1994, when we were using DSM-4, there was a disorder called Asperger's. And Asperger's involved a significant impairment in social behavior and occupational behavior, but there was no significant disruption of language or other cognitive abilities. Psychologists and psychiatrists found that they were struggling to use that category consistently. So, when we moved to DSM-5 in 2013, Asperger's was gone. So there's a category that no longer existed. Did people uh, who had social issues but no cognitive or language issues disappear? No, they were still there. They were just categorized in another way. Let's start with a really easy example. In the U.S., our government puts out recommendations for how much of each type of food category we should eat and that's called the My Plate, and you can see it here. And half of what we should eat is fruits and vegetables. So let me go through a list of items with you, and as I say each of these words out loud, you just categorize them as either a fruit or a vegetable. Okay, ready? Super simple, fruit or vegetable. Apple, potato, banana, strawberry, celery, avocado, tomato, string bean, corn, eggplant, olive. Easy, right? So if you ask most people to categorize those things as either a fruit or a vegetable, this is the answer they'll give you. The fruits were apple, banana, and strawberry, and the vegetables are listed on the right. But it turns out that's largely wrong. The reality is most of the items on that list were fruits. Some of the items on that list could be categorized as either fruits or vegetables or both, depending on who you're talking to. So categorization is actually pretty tricky. Oh, I forgot to tell you. What defines a fruit? If it has seeds on the inside, it's a fruit. Usually. Concepts and categories. That's what we're going to talk about in this lecture and the next lecture. A concept is our representation of a thing or a person or a class of things, like I have a concept of what a Democrat looks like. Categorization is a process by which we place things into categories. We put things into groups based on similarity. And a category should contain every possible example of a particular concept. So we have a concept of fruits and vegetables, right? And you just categorized items into fruits and vegetables. Now, you might think categorization is really easy. Four-year-old boy trying to categorize. So you can see how hard it is. And four-year-olds are pretty smart. Enjoy. Can you tell me what this is? Lion. It's a lion. What's this? Bear. Yeah. Sheep. Sheep. Yeah. And what is this? A oh, lion. Okay. Now, one of these pictures is different from the others. Can you tell me which one it is? Are they all different? Yes. 
Yes. This is the lion, this is the bear, this is the zebra, and this is the wagon. They are all different. Okay. Let's go again. What's this? A kite. Ice cream. An apple. Banana. Banana. Now, one of these is different from the others. Can you tell me which one that is? The banana. They're all different. Can you group any of them together into a category? Are there three of them that are kind of alike? Do you do this? What do you do with a kite? You fly. What do you do with ice cream? What do you do with an apple? Eat. And what do you do with a banana? Eat. So can you, what do you do? Which one's different from the others? Could you do, could you oh, do something different? Oh, 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 oh. Okay. They're all different. So a four-year-old can tell you about a lot of different things, but cannot categorize. So why do we even use categories if they're so hard, they're so challenging, and they're so malleable and confusing? Why do we use them? Well, they're useful. If you tell me that you saw a dog yesterday and it was some bizarre kind of dog that no one has ever seen before, the fact that you use the category dog is enough to tell me what to expect, right? If I rent a car from Hertz and they categorize the car as a subcompact or as a sedan, I have a sense of what I'll get. If you ask me to bring snacks for a party, I know that you mean something like chips and not apple pie. So categories are a very useful way to convey information quickly, which is why we use them. Come back and you'll learn all about different levels at which we can categorize things.